This is a short video about continued fractions in chapter 5 of Stein's number theory book. And in the very beginning of the chapter, um, he presents the famous golden ratio, which we know is 1 plus the square root of 5 divided by 2. And in fact, it's equal to this infinite fraction that is 1 plus 1 over the following. And I see that that fraction just goes on and on and on. And that, in a nutshell, is what a continued fraction looks like. That's the kind of thing we're studying in this section here. So right away, kind of cool that this famous number of the golden ratio can be uh, written in this form here. And then right below that, what's that next number? 103993 over this, oh, that's pretty darn close to pi. So that's a pretty good rational approximation to the irrational number pi. So both of these things uh, are computed using continued fractions. And so uh, what we'll see is continued fractions are a pretty cool way in order to, for our purposes, find rational number approximations to real numbers, you know, like e or like pi or like the golden ratio. So they give us a good way to approximate those irrational numbers with rational numbers. So what this video is mostly about is um, trying to get used to the notation of what a continued fraction is. So here's a little definition here for right now. So a continued fraction is always gonna be an expression of this form, a zero plus one over, we'll call this one a one, plus one over a two, plus etc. These a's theoretically can be anything. We're mostly gonna to stick to the case that these are positive integers, but theoretically they could be any kind of real number. Now I'm gonna leave those a's highlighted right here. A more convenient notation than like, you know, this. Uh, continued fraction notation can be a little bit cumbersome at times. A convenient notation to represent a continued fraction would be these brackets. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put all the a's in these brackets and kind of write them. It almost looks like a set, like we're listing out elements of a set. So we're just listing out what these a's are. And uh, if this process goes on indefinitely, such as, you know, in this picture, I see dot, dot, dot here, which makes me think that I'm going to do that continued fraction uh, indefinitely, then notice that there's the dot, dot, dots down here in the bracket notation too. So to get a handle on this, uh, this bracket one, two, looks an awful lot of integral notation, but in this number theory class, it means the continued fraction. And what are we supposed to do? Well, by the above, right, uh, we're saying one is a zero and two is a one, and that's it, and that's where I stop. So it should just be one plus one over two. And when you add those together, you get three halves. So there you go, there's your first continued fraction. Uh, three halves can be written as uh, one comma two here. Great. So that's called a finite continued fraction. Since I only use finitely many things, I'll say that again pretty soon. Uh, to give you another one though, that's a little bit more uh, interesting say. So the continued fraction uh, that has these as its a's, three, seven, 15, one, two, 92. Just remember, what do you do with these? So three sort of goes out front plus one over. And in some sense, it's one over the rest of this stuff. But there's more one overs along the way. So notice here, okay, seven's the next thing, plus one over the rest of this stuff. And so that's one over the rest of this stuff. And I keep going. And so finally, right, one over 292, 292 is like your last denominator. Great. And if you were to, say, get a common denominator, common denominator for all of those things, uh, that would come out to be this rational number here, which of course looks an awful lot like pi. So that's a pretty good decimal pro uh, yeah, it's a pretty good decimal approximation to pi. So this continued fraction here, which came up with this rational number, is a really good approximation to pi. And then on the next page, there's another really good one for e. So this 2.7 blah, 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 is a really good approximation to e. So that's trying to illustrate uh, what the first few pages of this chapter were about. Uh, why are these things useful? So they're useful for, again, giving us uh, rational approximations to potentially irrational numbers. All right, so what we're gonna to stick to for the rest of this video is finite continued fractions. So all it means when you say you've got a finite continued fraction is you don't have the dot, dot, dots after the AM here, right? It stops, AM is the last thing. And uh, what we'll also do is we'll try to figure out if you've got a finite continued fraction, one of the things we'll do, perhaps not in this video, but in future ones, just what's like the usual fraction that, uh, that continued fractions adds up to. To try to give you an example of what I mean by this right here, look at the one that we did say for E that's right up here. We're saying that this thing, if I was to actually do this algebra and add that up and make it look like a normal fraction that like I could show a high school student and not make them cry, it would be one, two, four, six, four. 
uh, sorry, 1264 over 465. So we'll look at how do I find those that numerator and that denominator, theoretically anyway. Uh, one of the last definitions is we'll say that, uh, I guess we already said we had a finite continued fraction. I've already told you that above. That just means with this process terminates, you do have an actual last denominator. But the last thing, last adjective that we'll throw on to continued fraction is simple. And this is the one we'll deal with most in this class. A simple continued fraction, all that means is that it could be finite or it could be infinite. But what I want to make sure is that all the AIs, so all of these guys, and it could keep going perhaps, but I just want to make sure they're all integers. So just to get a feel of some of the tricks in the algebra that we can do with continued fractions. So the continued fraction of just a zero it's just the number a zero. So like the continued fraction of two, we would just think it's the number two, that's it. All right, and uh, what else? The continued fraction of a zero comma a one. So remember, how does this go? This thing should come first and then plus one over the rest of this stuff. Well, it's just one over a one is next. So boom, there is what that looks like as a continued fraction. And of course you could get a common denominator. You don't have to, but you could just to see what that looks like. And so maybe to em emphasize or uh, illustrate what I was saying above, this would be what we called PN and this would be what we called QN uh, above somewhere, somewhere around here. Boom, in 5.2.1. All right, and to keep going with this, um, what else? Uh, A0, A1, A2, just so we're cool with this. A0 comes first plus one over the rest of this stuff. And uh, what should I have then? So I'd have one over a1 is next plus one over to what's to the right of a1. So plus one over uh, a2 here. Now what are some other tricks that we can do? If I look at this continued fraction here, a0 through an, what I wanna think about this as, that's equal to this. This is another way to write it. And so just to make everybody kind of more comfortable with that, um, what should this be? This should be equal to, um, I guess what, the last the last denominator should look something like, uh, you know, a n minus two plus. So I've got a whole bunch of denominators above it, right? And it starts with a zero plus all this other junk. And now I'm here, a n uh, minus two plus one over the last one here, which is a n minus one plus one over a n. All I'm saying to look at that as is, well, look, I could have thought of that as just these two more pieces right here. So I hope that you see that little identity there. Just another way to think about it. And another way here that I want to think about it, maybe I'll just leave, I'll try to write this a little bit differently for the next one. Another way you could pull this apart or think about it or twist it around in your head is this is the same thing. This one is the same thing as just a zero plus one over the continued fraction of the rest of these. So like, why should that be true? So again, I think we're comfortable with this one. This is the one that starts with a zero plus one over a one plus one over blah, blah, blah. And the last one should be you know, an minus one uh, plus one over an. And so the point though is, well, what is this stuff right here? That's just one over the continue, or that's just the continued fraction, sorry, where I started with an and continued, started with a one and continued on the an. So that's all this identity is trying to say here. So those are the same thing. Um, and the very last one, uh, if I can try to describe it a little bit more, this could also be thought of as this one down here, where uh, what is it trying to say? It's trying to say this should be a zero plus the continued fraction, or I'm sorry. Uh, so yeah, if I'm thinking about what does this one say? That's a zero plus, and now I'm gonna do the continued fraction um, for a one through a n. So again, that would be one over uh, a one plus blah, 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 in that case. Cool, so you get the exact same thing that you get here. All right, so Sage. Sage has some built-in continued fraction commands that uh, we'll see how to use them a little bit more. I do think that all these ones work still. If you notice, um, there is a little footnote here, this one, and all right, what's it tell me? Ooh, the continued fractions module in Sage has changed a lot. Please refer to the documentation of Sage online for the newest version. So I'll try to post a link to that in case you need it. But also, I think if you're in my class, I uh, made some notes in the assignments about um, what are some of the specific changes you might run into. But the usual syntax, though, if you want to do the continued fractions of something, it really is as easy as just continued fraction, continued underscore fraction of like, what do you want? So what's the continued fraction of 17 23rds? It's this thing right here. 
and what's the continued fraction of e, you know, to some default precision. I'm not sure what the default is, to be honest. But anyway, it spits out this very long continued fraction here. You do have control, so if you do know maybe some computer science and understand how precision and bits and floating point stuff relate to each other, we can figure out, like, you know, what if I want to make sure E is correct to say this many decimal places or this many bits? Um, you can set that as an argument, and it's just the uh, second slot. So think about continued fractions. Think about it, it has maybe two slots. The second slot, bits equals 21, is totally optional, right? Like up here, you don't have to use the second slot at all. But if you do have some desired range of accuracy in mind, you can set that there. And notice what it does. When you set bits to be 21, you get this continued fraction. When you change the bits to be 30, you get maybe a longer one. And so that means that uh, because I want, in the second one down here, I want to compute E a little bit more accurately, right? You could probably think that, oh, I probably need more terms in my continued fraction. And also too, you can also do some arithmetic uh, with continued fractions. So if A is the continued fraction of the 17 20 thirds, and if B is the continued fraction of 6 20 thirds, like when you add those two things together, Sage knows what it means to add these things together. And of course you should just get one, the continued fraction of one, which is the same thing. Great.